That's not even a crime. We're being tried for something that's not even a crime. They say at most it's a misdemeanor, but there's no misdemeanor either. That was Donald Trump at a press conference following New York Justice Juan Mershon setting trial for April 15th, the Manhattan District Attorney criminal case against Donald Trump for his falsification of business records relating to hush money payments to interfere with the 2016 election based on Donald Trump having sex with Stormy Daniels, or as she describes it, one of the most disgusting seconds of her life. Now, Donald Trump on the eve of trial trial is falling back into a predictable pattern of threats, attacks, and gaslighting that we've seen with Donald Trump. Now he's not only attacking Justice Juan Mershon, but he is also attacking Justice Juan Mershon's daughter. Just the same way he went after Justice Ngoron's family, Justice Ngoron's wife, the same way Donald Trump goes after uh, Washington, D.C. federal judge Tanya Chutkin's father, Trump goes after family members. This is what mobsters do, and this is what Donald Trump does. Here's a recent post that he just made moments ago. He said, Judge Juan Mershon, a very distinguished looking man, is nevertheless a true and certified Trump hater who suffers from a very serious case of Trump derangement syndrome. Pause there. Just think about that sentence in and of itself, talking about the looks of the judge. And that's what Donald Trump does with a lot of these judges. He very much attacks them on the basis of their looks, on the basis of their sex, on the basis of their race. And here, Donald Trump saying, Judge Mershon, he's a distinguished looking man, but for some reason, he has Trump derangement syndrome right here. I mean, just... Such a malignant, narcissistic framing of things, just showing how out of touch and, and bizarre and misogynistic he is. Anyway, I'll keep reading. In other words, he hates me. His daughter, goes right to talking about Justice Juan Mershon's daughter, his daughter is a senior executive at a super, as a super liberal Democrat firm that works for Adam Shifty Schiff, the Democrat National Committee, Dem Senate Majority Pack and even crooked Joe Biden. He was recently the judge on an unrelated trial of a long-term employee, elderly, and not in good health. Pause there. You have to try to decipher what Trump is talking about. Justice Juan Mershon presided over the criminal case that was related and involved the Trump organization. And the elderly man Trump is talking about is Trump's chief financial officer, Alan Weisselberg, who pled guilty to tax fraud in connection with that case and served actual prison time. Now, Alan Weisselberg separately recently pled guilty to felony perjury in the New York Attorney General's civil fraud case. Um, and he's awaiting sentencing in April there. But that's who Trump is talking about. So attacking Judge Mershon for presiding over the case of Weisselberg, who not only is now convicted of tax fraud, but has also now been convicted of perjury. The judge treated him viciously, telling him either you cooperate or I'm putting you in jail for 15 years. He pled and went to jail for very minor offenses, highly unusual, served four months in Rikers, and now they are after him again, this time for allegedly lying. Doesn't look like a lie to me. Pause. Alan Weisselberg pled guilty. No one's going after anybody. Weisselberg said he did it. He's now awaiting sentencing. He pled guilty to felony perjury. And they threatened him again with 15 years if he doesn't say something bad about Trump. That's false. He's already pled guilty. There's nothing in Weisselberg's agreement that requires him to cooperate and testify against Donald Trump. This is all made up. Weisselberg lied. He was caught lying. That's a crime. I mean, these things are just crimes. And I know the Republican Party is just like, you know, wants to normalize this behavior. And I know that the media wants to try to present both sides. You just can't lie. And he pled guilty. If Weisselberg thought that he's not guilty, then here's what you can do. Go in front of a jury. You can have a trial. You can be charged. Then, you know, then then you could be found not guilty. Like, by the way, 
when Bill Barr appointed a special counsel to go after people that Trump said, you know, was spreading Russia, 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 and all of these things, despite the fact that Donald Trump's closest advisors pled guilty and Donald Trump had to pardon them in connection with the Mueller investigation, but where Trump and Bill Barr basically had the people who initiated the, the, investiga the investigation into Trump's Russia connections, have them be prosecuted. They went to a trial and they were found not guilty. They were declared innocent based on frivolous claims being brought against them. They didn't plead guilty. If they pled guilty, then they would be admitting to the crime, but they didn't. Everything here is all about this victimhood and whining. And this goes right back into the predictable pattern that we've seen. Trump goes, he pled and went to jail for very minor offenses, highly unusual, served four months in Rikers, and now they are after him again, this time for allegedly lying, doesn't look like a lie to me, and they threatened him again with 15 years if he doesn't say something bad about Trump. He is devastated and scared. Then he puts this in caps. These country-destroying scoundrels and thugs have no case against me. Witch hunt. Well, look, if the jury finds you innocent, I will respect the outcome of what the jury says. We, we, we are in a jury system. Even if the jury finds you innocent, though, I will still judge your behavior. If the jury found you innocent, I would say Trump was innocent of these crimes because he went through a trial and the jury found him innocent. That's our process. Now, where I would still judge you is if anybody I know acted like this, wrote messages like this, in a company or organization that I worked at, whether it was a large corporation, medium-sized corporation, small corporation, or whatever, I would say that that person should not be in any leadership position at all and should probably be fired from the company because this is not how normal human beings behave and interact. And the fact that you go and you post stuff like this hundreds of times a day is frankly demonstrates real serious deep seated you know issues and if anyone acted like that so i will judge your ability to um to not be in any leadership position i will certainly say do not give this person nuclear weapons this person should not be leading a major political party but if the jury found you innocent i would accept that outcome that's the system that we have this constant whining and gaslighting and attacking the judge and attacking the judge's daughter, though, and attacking, you know, in, in the justice in Goran's case, the judge's wife and the judge's kids and the judge's law clerk. I mean, as someone who went to law school, you know, and, and I have a deep reverence for the law, one of the things that's so frustrating to me about all of this is that the law that I love, the, the the elegance of it, the fact that they're the fact that the American legal system, for a lot of its flaws, you know, had had an elegance to it. And and, and don't get me wrong, there's a lot of reform that's needed. There's a lot of issues, so I don't want to sugar. Oh, it's, everything's perfect, but to see the system be so attacked with stuff like this is is so strange and 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 so bizarre. You know, let's not forget that Trump did that photo of himself right before the indictment was issued with a baseball bat looking like he was going to hit Alvin Bragg. And then what do they do? They gaslight us and they go, oh, he wasn't doing that. He was advertising the baseball bat. I mean, come on. That behavior is just so pathetic. And by the way, I mean, the whole day Trump is making posts like that and he's attacking Alvin Bragg. He's attacking the judge. He goes back into that whole pattern again. Here's DA Bragg fought everyone about trying this no crime case, but crooked Joe Biden's thugs push him to go forward and pushed him hard. They wanted him to go after me. Crooked's political opponent. He just didn't want to do it. They ended up sending Matthew Colangelo, Merrick Garland's right hand, after a stop at the corrupt and racist New York State Attorney Letitia Pickaboo James office. It's just like racist, disgusting. It's like, again, who behaves like this? Who talks like that? In fact, though, at the hearing that took place on Monday, when Donald Trump's lawyers could have presented all of these, if they wanted to present the facts and say, look, this shows that the district attorney has all of this relationships with the feds and, and, and they're working together and they control the documents. As Judge Mershon said, as Justice Mershon said, there's nothing in the record that shows that there was any relationship. In fact, if anything, the DOJ, by turning over documents late, 
ended up causing the trial to get pushed back from March 25th. We should have been in trial already to April 15th. The fact that the DOJ is turning over these documents late is hurting Alvin Bragg. So your whole, your whole theory here is that Yes, the way that they're working together is that the is that the DOJ and the SDNY have are are are, are so trying to help that what they're actually doing we're screwing over the Manhattan District Attorney by not making these documents available a year ago and then turning over some documents before trial causing a delay and causing you to make this it makes zero sense because it's all lies. That's the thing. Everything he says is lies. By the way, he's saying this stuff and attacking Justice Mershon's daughter the same day he's out there posting videos of himself on his social media platform selling Bibles for $59.99 and claiming it doesn't go to his campaign, but it goes to CIC LLC, which is Commander-in-Chief LLC, the company where he sells NFTs and golden fake golden sneakers. I mean, what are we talking about here, people? What are we talking about? This that, that, That's supposed to be, oh, that's conservative. We got liberals and conservative. No, that's weird. That's deranged behavior. That's strange. That's grifty. Call it what it is. We're always going to call it what it is here on the Midas Touch Network together. Whether you're a mainstream conservative, mainstream Republican, not a MAGA, liberal, progressive, independent, this is the place for you. Oh, and by the way, if you ever wanted a brief distraction from all of the politics, I know it can get heavy sometimes. You know, we created a channel, True Crime MTN. Go and check it out. David Arenberg, one of the top lawyers in the world, uh, is our partner on that channel. So just go search True Crime MTN, subscribe there, and you get some hot takes on news that doesn't always involve the politics stuff that I know you wanted to hear because this channel is going to focus just on this stuff. And we could have that channel focus on other cases, but that don't involve like political stuff. Anyway, let me know what you think about that idea, but just search True Crime MTN on YouTube. Hit subscribe. We're on our way to 3 million subs. Thanks to your support. Have a great one. Hey, Midas Mighty. Love this report. Continue the conversation by following us on Instagram at Midas Touch to keep up with the most important news of the day. What are you waiting for? Follow us now.